Today I'm talking all about allergic reactions. What are they and how do we treat them? Okay, so my next question was sent in by Melissa and she says that she went to her vet with her puppy. She received a dose of Revolution for fleas and after that his scratching actually got worse and the puppy developed bumps on his stomach and ears. She didn't know what to do to stop this reaction or could it be something else? Um, she's applied some cortisone cream to try and calm the itching but what else can she do? So let's start off by saying that Revolution contains the active ingredient Selamectin um, and is primarily used to treat and prevent flea infestations although it's also active against a number of other parasites as well. So like any drug there is a small risk of side effects um, and it's that it does sound like this puppy has had an allergic reaction to the revolution and that's resulted in itchiness and hives so we'll often get kind of little small bumps swellings of the skin that are itchy and um, yeah that happens generally pretty soon after the application say of the medication or if it was a sting or a bite then the allergic reaction happens very quickly if it's delayed by quite a long time then it's unlikely that the reaction t was to that individual um, application of that product for example so while we can't say it definitely was related to the revolution I don't like coincidences and if it happened very shortly after the application then it's a fair bet to say that that was the cause now there are a number of other things that we can see with allergic reactions um, and other side effects that we can see with Revolution or with Selamectin. So Stronghold is another name for this product as well depending on where you are in the world. And um, they can include going off food, drooling, diarrhea, vomiting um, and even laboured breathing, twitching and seizures if we're having a really severe allergic reaction. Although these are very very rare. So kind of these side effects they are kind of really expected in less than one in 10,000 animals so you can see then that they're really not very common. Now moving on to the treatment of allergies so what we can do to reduce itchiness um, to reduce those skin swellings and if other things are happening to prevent those from getting worse um, there's a number of different things and that can um, that can include anti giving antihistamines it can include giving steroids so either by injection or by alcohol in tablet form um, and also adrenaline is another thing so if we think of people who have really bad allergic reactions so the classic would be people suffering from peanut allergy they carry around epipens and that is um, to administer adrenaline um, to, yeah, to ultimately save their lives. So if we're having a really serious reaction then we would give adrenaline. It's very very uncommon that that happens, very rare. Um, more often than not we see mild reactions, a little bit like what we've seen in this puppy. We give an antihistamine or we give a steroid and that tackles and settles things down very nicely and very quickly. But ultimately the treatment recommendation needs to be based on an examination. So looking to see how severe things are and then making a judgment call and obviously your vet's going to need to do that. Now if you have got a dog who does have um, allergies to bites, to stings, to that kind of thing or they get reactions to other different bits and pieces in the environment then and, and you know that they only get this hive um, reaction, these skin lumps and they get itchy, it never progresses to anything more than that then it's definitely um, an option and a good idea to have a reserve of the most appropriate treatment um, kind of with you so that you could administer that when the reaction happens without needing to see your vet um, but again your vet will be able to provide you with a prescription um, or with those drugs for you to keep handy should you need them. And then what can we do with for this puppy in the future? Well we definitely want to be avoiding products in this class in the future in this individual dog. So like I say although these reactions are very rare um, in the normal population less than one in 10,000 this puppy is you know one of the unlucky ones if you like um, and so we want to avoid um, using the revolution again. There are plenty of other different products out there so I've um, spoken in a previous video just recently about the isoxazoline class of drugs um, and the similar recommendation is 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 given you know in in this case as well it really depends on what parasites there are present in your local environment um, and depends on what diseases we're trying to prevent so if there are no ticks then we don't need to worry about having tick cover but if there are ticks and there's Lyme's disease then we want to be using a product that is very effective against ticks so that could be um, something like a Soresto collar um, Brevecto Symparica something like that um, you know if we've got Leishmania we might need to, to, to be treating for something that is active against sand flies um, if you know fleas are a real problem then we definitely need to be covering fleas so you know there's different products out there that are going to be appropriate depending on the area that you're living in and the disease risk that those parasites might pose 
You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.